Let's see if I can peel that. And when I clicked peel, you'll see it did break it apart at that seam and created the, the green line representing the seam for those two components. Um, in older versions, as soon as you click this, it gave you the green line and you got the seam. I, I've noticed with this version that we have a tendency for it not to immediately do that. Okay, so that's how you can create a seam. Again, I'm going to undo this. And we'll take a look at some other ways to um, cut across, cut apart our geometry. So I can create my seams that way. I'm going to select the bottom faces. And let's just get to an angle and try and get those with the selection. Now, when I go to select the faces, um, turn off element. When I go to select these faces, I have to make sure that this ignore back facing is turned off. Otherwise, I don't get the back facing um, polygons. So again, turn off my back facing. And I want to let me just get a little bit straighter. Turn off ignore back facing and click and see what I end up with with my selection. So I may want to deselect something. Um, I would have a better shot at this from a orthographic view. Let me hold down and click and drag and just check to see if I have a nice even selection. And that's good. So what I can use is I can come over here and use my um, projection types. So I already have planar selected. And we can go and pick if it's not projecting from the correct angle um, how it's going to project X, Y, or Z options. And once we have that, you can do a um, appeal. So let's open up the editor. And let's pull everything out. Um, and then we will turn off projection so I can deselect this. And you'll see I have a scene. So let's go select by element. Slide these over. Um, I have this lid as a separate element. Just move that out of the way. And then these two objects are separate elements. really don't like this selection. It used to be that you could select in either view with either of the selection types and now you have to be in the correct view for it to select properly. Okay, so I do have um, the separated part and we're going to go and say um, quick peel and allow those pieces to, to get broken up. And because I had the seam going through this section, that's why we have that extra peel. So you can go and pick different projection types, um, put a seam in, and then have it peel based on that projection type. So planar is the one I tend to use. If you can't get it to align properly, sometimes you'll have the, uh, the actual gizmo here at a weird angle. Sometimes you need to change your X, Y, or Z or click center. But these are our quick peel tools that are going to allow you to um, just go ahead and, and do a peel whenever you put a seam in. 
All right, so again, I, it's a lot of work to straighten all of this out. I can go and select these, and then we can take a look at, let's see. I don't want to pelt these, um, but let's let's just do one of these and, and pelt it. So I'm just going to come in here and grab this element, and we'll take a look at pelt. So I just want to move everything else out of my way. So with the pelt, we have stretchers that show up. And if you click to pelt, you get these stretchers that are going to try and straighten out your um, mesh. And you can go in there. They have a start pelt. You can pick simulation samples. Um, I like to turn on show your local distortion. And then you click to start the pelt. And it usually stops itself. But you have to click to hit stop and make sure it's stopped before you can move on to the next step. So sometimes it will pull too far. Um, when you go to relax, the same thing. You can click on relax and look at the color for distortion. Wherever it's green, we have no distortion. And then when we click and relax, um, if we leave it too long, it'll start to twist onto itself. So I have very little distortion here. But if we click again and wait, actually that's pretty good. We didn't get a problem with it. Sometimes we will have a map or excuse me, um, an island, and it will start to twirl onto itself. So you do have to watch for that. And then down here, you just click on commit. And now we've stretched out that island. Um, and when we go to paint on it, we won't have that distortion. So we can go and do this with the next one. And I know it got much larger, but that's okay. We don't need to worry about that right now. We'll just pack it, and once we come in here and arrange, it will rescale everything for us. So we'll go ahead and apply the <coughs> quick pelt to this one. Similar results, hit stop, and now we're going to start to relax. And again, that's having a really nice result. So I'm going to commit that. If it starts twisting, you can um, cancel it instead of commit. Okay. So we have these two sections, and I still haven't cut these apart, um, or the, the top, but just to show you how to pack it again. So if I select everything, we can come in, and when we pack, you'll see that they jump back to the correct scale. So even if you don't want this arrangement, I like to hit the custom pack, or pack custom, and then that way I can get my scale correct before we move on. So if you don't have your scale correct and you put a material on, you will have the material show wrong. So if we look, we see that the numbers and letters are the correct scale for all components here. Okay, Something like this, we haven't cut apart yet, and we do have a bit of stretching on this geometry here as well. And the idea is that we can get a nice mask that sits without distortion to the mask. So having this um, texture that they give you by default now, which is nice, it is handy. So you can see what your mask, you know, excuse me, what your texture looks like in the uh, in the viewport, and see if things look like they are distorted. Okay, so again, I'm just going to pull this out, but I know everything's been scaled properly now. And I do like to turn this off when I'm not looking at it. It's just a little harder to, to read. Um, all right, that's it for now. We'll 